I know you guys probably aren't going to believe this, but today we're actually working on a project that's not a mechanicing job. <laughs> we're hanging a hummingbird feeder. I know we live in the desert and you think that like living things don't survive here, but they do. There's so many hummingbirds here. What do you think about right here? Maybe, no, I'm over this way more. Like in the middle of the window over there. Okay, whatever you think. There we go. Cool. Think Maybe. one's gonna be enough? I think two just to keep it from like, Oh, that's right, lateral. to keep it straight, yeah. Okay, so with the weight on it, it shouldn't move too much. So it'll be yeah, hard. no, I think it'll be fine. Yeah. Okay, next is... Got to drill a hole in the PVC. Look, they have this workbench up here. <laughs> Handy. It really is. is. There it is. So now... That's nice and sturdy, and there we go. We have to make a longer cord for the hummingbird feeder to hang from. So in the store, we noticed how this wire hanger has these fancy little crimp things, and we found them. Ace Hardware had them, so we could buy more of this wire and those crimp things to make a new one. Yes, so first off, we gotta... Could it? Could it? What they didn't have were these kind of ends here, but that's all right. We're doing our own. So this is the loop for the top? Yeah. Whoa. Oh, you mean This is going inside. inside, yeah. So then you just hit it with a hammer. Well, just that's hammer it. down. Hammer time. Then, and then, excellent. All right, now to figure out how long. I knew we saw a ladder around here somewhere. It's so handy being parked at the ex in laws. Let me go inside and see how it looks. Yeah, that's perfect. This is the bend point right here. This is where we want it to bend to. There's actually two little holes through the middle of that crimp thingy. Yeah. So it's the exact right size for that metal wire. Like yeah. who knew they made and sold these exact things? All right, you ready? There it is. All right. Now make sure it's tight it is. Cut off the excess. And there we go. God, this isn't gonna work. Why? Oh, we're, we're gonna have to go up on the deck to clip it in on and off every time. Yeah, probably like install it that way. We should have made the carabiner on that end. Yeah, I didn't really think about how we were gonna <laughs> get it off and on while we're parked out in the middle of nowhere. It's one thing when you're at the in-laws and there's a ladder. <laughs> okay, we gotta see if I can reach this from our tiny little step stool here. Whoa, it's right underneath it. I need it out here. <laughs> yeah, this might be easier with a carabiner on this end and a little bit lower, but we'll see. 
Okay. So when you guys repot a plant, do you put rocks in the bottom? That's how my mama taught me how to do it. So I still do. Good. So cute, hi, huh? it's such a cute plant. There, now Peppermint Patty can take her place on the dash with Gladys and Seneca. What a happy family of plants they are. I love my little dashboard plant family. Still waiting on our first customer. Meanwhile, right. we gotta call Chris real quick. Okay. Can you guys believe there is enough room in our kitchen for two people and an ironing board? This is our setup for ironing the curtains to sew them. All right, couch, curtain, number one. Maybe. <laughs> Getting off to a slow start. <laughs> oh, they're a little longish, honestly. I think they'll be okay. We're so close to having one more. Let's go put some thread in another one. This is curtain number, finished curtain number four, number two of the couch curtains. <coughs> Excuse me. COVID. Yeah, Just no. kidding, I don't have COVID, all right? <laughs> hey, how's it look? Amazing. I can't believe you have uh, curtains going in, man. <laughs> it's about time, huh? We've only been living here seven months. <laughs> I'm reasonably happy with that. I think it'll do. I do too, I think it's awesome. I think it'll definitely keep the sun out. And I'm hoping it will keep some degree of cold out. Yeah. I think it'll do a great job keeping the cold out, actually. You do? But we won't know until we get them on all the way. It's gonna be many, many moons until we can test that. Thank God. Right? Whew. Hi guys, and welcome back to Mike Ivers' bus mechanicing video series. <laughs> so, <laughs> today we're gonna focus on air brakes. Shocking, I know, because <laughs> that's all we've been focused on mechanically. But it's super important because um, the more I learn about it, the scareder it has made me that we have driven this bus as much as we have. And so, today we're gonna be focused on the brake chamber. I called it the pod in the last video, but it's actually called the brake chamber. A lot of people, you know, in slang refer to them as the pods um, or the cans is another word for it. In this case, um, one of our brake chambers is bad. So let's go underneath. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So today we're working on this. This is the brake chamber or the brake pod. And on ours, uh, well, let me just explain what it does. So the last video you saw of the brakes, you saw us replace this part up here. And that was the R12 relay valve. And it, what it does is it sends air down this hose here to actuate the brake. And this thing right here is what moves. And this, when you push the brakes, this pushes this way, pushing this. This is a pin in here that goes inside your, your brake, uh, actuates the brake shoes so they make contacts and the bus stops, right? Not, pretty straightforward there. However, when you push the brakes, what's supposed to happen is this should go out and that's it, okay? What's happening on ours is when we push the brake out, air comes blowing out of these holes here. There's four holes all the way around this piece right here. That should never happen. So what that means is a piece in here is broken and there's something in here called a diaphragm. Now I can't wait to get this apart and show you guys the inside because this all looks really complicated, but when you see how this works, you'll be like, okay, so you blow up a balloon, it pushes on something and stops your bus, got it. That's what it does. So let me get the tools to do this, but we gotta take some precautions first and I'll tell you why in a sec. First thing we need to do is protect ourselves from this. So on older brakes, 
you see these two bands right here they these are like clamshells of the centerpiece right here on this side of the brake the side that doesn't have the rod coming out is a spring in there compressed to 2,000 pounds and so if we mess up on this like we could be killed by it it's, it's that bad there's stories so what we need to do is protect ourselves this bolt right here hooks onto that a plate in front of the spring and pulls it out and holds it there but what else that does is it takes the brakes off on this wheel so before we do anything we're going to double check all our chocks and make sure this bus can't move so we don't die under here because then you'll never see this video and what a, how depressing would that be <laughs> There we go. That way we don't die. This little rubber cap here. Ugh. Oh man. That's what exposes where the caging bolt goes. And I'm trying to see if I can. Yeah, I don't think we'll be able to see that with a camera. The front of it looks like this. It's like a key. Goes in, you turn it into place, and then you tighten this nut right here and it pulls the spring back so i can barely see it in past and there it's keyed in all right so now i take something that looks like a 5 8 or 9 16. i'm going to start with a 9 16 way bigger. It's bigger than 5 8 too. It is. It's a monster. 11 16 oh, Bigger than that? You know what this means, don't you? <laughs> Three quarters. It's not in this toolkit? It's the one right there. In the bag? Yep. There it is. That would suck at the metric. Oh no, we're good. Okay, so... I'm turning this, it's definitely coming out. It's actually a struggle. The mechanical advantage I have over that spring is enormous. And yet this is still kind of a struggle to turn. So that'll give you an idea of how powerful that spring is. I am taking the brake off right now as I do this. I think that's it. Okay. So, back to what we're doing here. Never, ever, 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 ever take this off. You can take this one off, not this one. If you do that, it absolutely could kill you, okay? So, just keep that in mind. Stay alive. Stay alive. On the back of this, it says Type 30. On the back of this, on the top part of the writing, it also says type 30. This is the balloon I was talking about. When you're about to take this piece off here, in order to get it back on easier, if you can move this out, this piece here, if we can move it out a little bit, it'll make putting this back together easier. See if I do this, watch right here. Zoom in right here on the brake pad right here. Okay. Do you see them? Yep. Now I'm gonna actuate this, watch. That's the brakes. Oh. That's how I'm, I'm actually moving the brakes right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this out and I'm gonna clamp this on there holding it there so I don't have to um, fuss with this later just for the sake of the argument here all of the air is out of this thing so there's no air in our bus the reason we're doing this it's easy to replace these cans but it's easy even easier to replace the diaphragm which I'll show you in a sec there go okay Tap this off real quick. OK. 
Okay, cool. It's off. <laughs> <Scary. laughs> okay. This is a diaphragm. As you can see, it's already beginning to fail. If it isn't all, boy, it's just about to fail. Wow. Wait, hold on. Let me zoom up on that. Holy moly. Okay. Some cracked up dry rot, huh? This is a life safety issue here. Okay. If this fails, then you're going to lose air pressure a lot faster. Every time he hits the brakes, your, your air pressure is going to drop. And at some point it's going to drop so much that your emergency brakes will have to kick in in order to stop. And so obviously you don't want to have that happen to you. So you get one of these. This costs a whole grand total of $6.99 at the most expensive auto parts store, which is Napa in my opinion. So yeah, $6.99 completely can save your life. So basically what happens here is when you hit the brakes, air comes into this hose right here where this lives. This gets pushed this way, which pushes on this plate right here. And that plate pushes on that rod that makes your brakes come out. Like it is such a simple, simple system to do. Mm -hmm. So the idea of not doing this yourself, you know, I mean, I, I'm not gonna make fun of anybody, but you should be able to do this yourself. It's not that hard. Sure, all the hoses are going the right direction and we're all centered here. Like that. And we bring this guy back in to lock it all up. Ta da! How easy is that? Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. that oh my gosh you're already done yep we just gotta take off this uh, caging bolt now <sighs> reapply our brakes the type 30 means it's 30 square inches so if you put a hundred pounds per square inch in there you end up with 3,000 pounds of force the spring inside here is only good to about 18 to 200, 2,000 pounds of force. So your brakes are better than your emergency brakes, okay? So you want your brakes to work. Don't ever think, oh, don't worry, I'll be fine. My emergency brakes will save me. You just want to do your maintenance. That's why we're here under the bus again. <laughs> again. Go. Ta-da, and that's it. Rear cap on, number one is done. Wow. Let's do this one since we're here. <laughs> Might as well, that took all of five minutes. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I like that about this project, because, you know, I looked at replacing the whole can. You can, it's really easy, but you gotta take all these hoses off. The push rod that comes out of it is not cut to length. It's, it's about this long. You have to cut it back to the right thing. That means you have to take measurements off this one here so you know how much the other one should be. So there's some, it makes it more tedious to do it's it. It's literally more complicated to replace the whole thing than it is to just replace the inside yeah. thing. Yeah, well, there you are. There we go. We should have a really deep throat socket right now. And it goes in, turns, and then can pull back. So and it locks it there, so you can't un accidentally turn it out of position and have it come flying out of here. You can hear the brakes coming off now. This is the hardest part of the whole job, <laughs> just getting this thing off. It really is. After this, it's all downhill. Yeah. So we're not taking this one off. We're taking this one off. So we don't get killed. Good call. Okay. Whoa. 
Here's our bad one. And indeed, you can see light through it. Oh my gosh, you're kidding. Right here. Oh yeah. So oh. that's where air is actually blowing through and you know causing this thing to be junk and a safety hazard so if you'll do me the honors on the front or on the dinette is the other diaphragm oh there it is here's the inside right here this plate right here is what the spring is pushing against so when your air brakes come on this plate right here comes out and it presses on the rubber which is then pressing on this and then this is actuating your brakes right there which i forgot to take that thing off and put it on this but i think i can still do it i didn't put this on so now this is sticking out but as you can see it's manually activating the our brake things i'm going to rotate back this plunger right there like that and I'm going to oh like that and that just holds this thing in a little bit now where's our new gear or thanks home if you notice the perfect fit that this is right here and yeah. do it be <laughs> so once we get that stuff all lined up again, all the surfaces align like the stars. Get it tight, close enough we can thread. For you techies out here, I believe this bolt needs to be tightened to 35 foot pounds. For your moonshiners out here, you, this whole clamp arrangement probably looks real familiar. And how do you know about this, huh, Moonshiner? I just I watch I watch Moonshiners on uh, Discovery Channel. Uh -huh, so. I'm sure that's what it was. Mm -hmm. Obviously. Oh gosh, really something. We have good brakes back here, by the way. Good. We have like really good brakes. That's a job we won't have to do for a while then. Hallelujah. And now the brakes are on again. Ta-da. Put this cap on. And I'm spent. I can't believe how fast you got that done. That's it. Okay, just a little rant here because I feel stupid for driving the bus with the brake problems that we had. Though for we, seven months. For seven months. We never had a problem stopping, okay? But after digging in and really starting to understand the bus, like I feel guilty for driving the bus the way I did because we put everybody around us in danger. And uh, you know, I used to laugh and say, ha ha ha, you know, we are exempt from a CDL and blah, blah, blah. I recant that, honestly. I would say, that people that drive an airbus system maybe they should get a cdl and the only reason i say that is because the importance of understanding the mechanics of your bus because i didn't know this was broken until i knew what broken was i would have known that had my cdl cdl spends a huge portion of that class is spent on air brakes oh. and so you really know how to do a brake check how to know your brakes are within tolerance uh, how to adjust your slack adjusters, how to know what your pressure should be, um, how to change the different filters, how to, all the things. There's so many things involved in this. And not knowing that, now I look back on it and it kind of scares me a little bit. I have tons more confidence now because I spent so much time learning the different components of the bus and the things I need to do. A lot of your comments have really helped also. I'll be not, I'm not going to lie. Like some people have put some really solid comments out there to help us uh move forward in the maintenance on this bus and to get this thing up to a point that it could pass a uh, a dot test front to rear and that's what i'm going for even though I'm, I'm exempt from having it i would want this thing to pass that so that's where we're at on this a couple more things to do let's get to it
Mail time! Mail time! We have a package that we just found out has been sitting in our mailbox for hmm, a couple of weeks now. Maybe longer. <laughs> we suck at this. It's been oh, a, it's been a month. Over a month. Okay. We're horrible people. Yeah, the problem is we have two mailboxes, one in our old hometown and one in the town where Mike works. So sometimes there's a little discrepancy between picking up the mail in two places. But this is from a family that I think we know who this is I in think Washington. So. I think so. It is John and Christy Campbell. Yay, hi John hi, and Christy. Hi you guys. I chose this card because the poppies grow wild and free and therefore it reminded me of you. The coffee, <laughs> Wild and there's free. coffee, is my favorite local blend, and I knew you would appreciate it. We gotta open this first. We better, yeah, the it's card. Just giving it all the That's good right? stuff. Right, come on. Okay, what do we got? Ooh, what is this? Idaho Spud. Is this like a potato candy bar? <laughs> what? Oh, look. I don't have my glasses. I love it when people say coffee. The it's the next next thing to whiskey. Oh yeah, I'm down with the coffee too. Ah, I can smell it from here. It's so good. It's Carmella's. So good. Carmella's. Carmella's and Idaho Spud. <laughs> These might be good together. Oh look! Oh my gosh! What a great idea! And look, cat That's hats. A cool hat. Because we have a caterpillar engine Heck in our yeah. bus. How awesome right? is that? Heck and you yeah. know what, you guys? I literally do not even own a hat. And she I live in Arizona. Mine. I know it's embarrassing. That's so a cool hat. This is actually going to come in Super handy. Super cool. <laughs> Thank you. But wait, there's more. But wait. <laughs> there's this a one. flying saucer. Pull that out. <laughs> Whoa! It could be breakable, man. You think that's why they packed it like this? It could be edible too. <laughs> Don't mess up the food. Maybe you should be cutting that tape. Whatever. What could it be? It's heavy. It's a jar. Wow, they packed this thing in. Beefy. Here, let me get I that. feel like I'm this, gonna lose an eye over here. I feel like this is a a uh, like one of those things, like one of those dolls from Russia. Oh yeah, those nesting dolls. Yeah, we're almost there. 17 bags to go. This is one way to get rid of all your grocery bags. Send them to Mike and Carrie. <laughs> nice. Thanks for the grocery bags. And the Idaho Huckleberry Jam. Huckle, you know, I don't know if I've ever had Huckleberry Jam in my life. I don't think I've had a Huckleberry. So no, I'm ready for some toast, like right this instant. Oh, I bet they were paying attention to my toast fetish. She does have a toast <laughs> fetish. Delicious. Toast and coffee. And, and what is this? Well, it says right here, the candy bar that makes Idaho famous. So are they in Idaho? Because it looks like it They're came from not in Washington. Idaho. What are you guys trying to do here? Confuse us? It's working. <laughs> it's working. <laughs> Fully confused. All right, back to the card. Okay. Maybe uh, there's an explanation. The jelly is for your toast. I, I was right. Mm -hmm. Huckleberries grow wild in the forest and are a local favorite. It's always a treat to come across a huckleberry patch. While roaming the woods, just watch out for bears because they really like them too. The candy bar that made Idaho. Oh, candy famous. bar. It is candy bar. They made Idaho famous, lol. Marshmallow and chocolate, so I knew this would be right Oh, up there yeah! Down. And the best part <laughs> of the box is cat hats, as you may or may not know. John now, now works for Western States Caterpillar. Oh! Two cool. thumbs up for John. <laughs> anyway, we love you. Thanks for taking us along on your adventures. Love, John and Chrissy Campbell. Oh, wow. P.S. I saw the Northern Lights on Memorial Day <gasps> weekend two years ago. Oh! Oh, so jelly! So jelly. Oh, that looks really good. <laughs> right? Really good on you. Yours looks pretty good Dang. on you too, Mahomes. Awesome. Thank you, guys. You guys are on me. I have a spud bar right now. <laughs> now so much for the diet. That's right. Diet my butt. <laughs> oh, it looks so delicious. I should be jealous.